Replacing your head gasket is one of the largest and most complicated jobs you can do on your car. This video begins with several procedures already done. For a list of those procedures and a comprehensive list of tools you will need for this job, please see the link at the end of this video or the body of the text below the video for further assistance. With the intake manifold removed, you now have to remove the coolant pipe, green arrow, from the crankcase. These pipes almost always break. Have a new one on hand with new O-rings. Using a 19 millimeter wrench, remove the Vanos oil line below the oil filter housing. Cover the line and the opening to prevent dirt from entering the Vanos system. Purple arrow. This line has to be moved out of the way to remove the coolant pipe. Using a flathead screwdriver, lever up the hose clamp until it reaches the stop, green arrow. Then pull the hose straight off the coolant pipe. Working at the front and rear of the coolant pipe, remove the two 10 millimeter fasteners as indicated by the green arrows. The fasteners have already been removed in this picture. Remove the coolant pipe from the cylinder head. If needed, gently lever between the cylinder head and the coolant pipe flange, green arrow. The pipe usually gets stuck and breaks. If it does, be sure to get all of the pieces out of the engine. Remove the plastic camshaft cover from the cylinder head by pulling up and off the cylinder head. Use a 22 millimeter socket on the crankshaft pulley fastener to rotate the engine. Rotate the engine clockwise until the first camshaft lobes point towards each other, green arrows. This brings the engine cylinder number one to the top dead center position. This is the first step in locking the engine timing position. Next you are going to remove the dust plug from the crankcase. It is located below the engine inside of the mounting reinforcement. This photo shows the plug, green arrow, on an engine removed from the vehicle for clarity. Purple arrow points to the engine pan. Remove the plug from the crankcase. The dust plug can become stuck over time. If needed, pry it out using a flathead screwdriver. The green arrow points to the dust plug. The purple arrow points to the throttle housing. Next, install crankshaft locking pin tool 112300 into the hole the dust plug was removed from. When installing the tool, push it in until it bottoms out. Slowly rotate the engine until the pin drops in about 12 millimeters further. Once the tool is installed, confirm the crankshaft can no longer be rotated. Follow the instructions that came along with your special tool kit to ensure proper use. Remove the studs at the rear of the cylinder head using a 10 millimeter deep socket, green arrows. Install camshaft locking jig 113240 at the rear of the camshaft, green arrow. The jig should slide down onto square bosses at the end of the camshaft, then secure together. Follow the instructions that came along with your special tool kit to ensure proper use. Working at the front of the Vanos actuator, remove the upper 8mm Allen plug. Next, remove the lower 8mm Allen plug. When you remove the lower plug, be prepared to catch a small amount of oil that's going to come out. Using needle nose vice grips, pull the plastic plugs out of the Vanos actuator as indicated by the green arrow. There is one plug for each camshaft. Next, you're going to remove the Vanos fasteners. The fasteners are T30 torque and left hand threads. To remove, rotate in the clockwise direction. Remove the engine hoisting hook fasteners, then remove the hook from the engine, green arrow. Remove the seven 10 millimeter Vanos actuator fasteners, green arrows. Slide the Vanos actuator off the cylinder head and remove it. Be prepared to catch some oil spillage with a rag. Using a 32 millimeter deep socket or wrench, remove the primary timing chain tensioner located on the right side of the engine. Next, you have to compress the secondary timing chain tensioner and lock it into the compressed position. It is located at the top front of the cylinder head, push down on the top guide, then insert a pin, green arrow, into the hole in the tensioner, yellow arrow. 
working at the exhaust camshaft, remove the three 10 millimeter impulse wheel fasteners green arrows. Next, remove the impulse wheel from the camshaft. Then remove the spring plate. As you remove these items, note the installation orientation. I like to lay them down in the order they came off. Then remove the intake camshaft sprocket 10 millimeter nuts, green arrows. Then remove the spring plate. It is labeled front. Now back at the exhaust camshaft, remove the three E8 inverted torque bolts, green arrows. Only two are shown, one is blocked by my hand. A few mechanics I know like to zip tie the camshaft timing chain onto the sprockets before removing it. This helps keep them in the right order and prep for reinstallation in the case you don't have the special tool. Lift the camshaft timing chain with the sprockets off the camshaft. The intake camshaft splined shaft, green arrow, will come off with them. Remove four 10 millimeter timing chain tensioner fasteners, green arrows, then remove the timing chain tensioner from the cylinder head. Pull the spline shaft out of the exhaust camshaft and store with the other exhaust camshaft components. Next, remove the exhaust camshaft sprocket from the timing chain, then store the sprocket with the other exhaust camshaft components. For now, loop the timing chain on the top of the exhaust camshaft end to temporarily store it. Now you have to remove the four E8 inverted torque timing chain covered fasteners as indicated by the green arrows. Be sure to note the location of each fastener as they are different lengths. Then remove the timing chain guide, yellow arrow, from the cylinder head. We are now at the part where the cylinder head bolts can be removed, green arrows. There are two ways to do this. You can remove the camshafts first or leave the camshafts installed. I prefer to leave the camshafts installed as this saves time. There are notches in the camshaft that allow access to the bolts. Remove all 14 E12 inverted torque bolts from the cylinder head. Start in the center of the cylinder head and work your way outwards. Once the bolts are loose, I remove them with a magnet. Then I remove the washer from below the camshaft using a magnet as well. Now you can remove the cylinder head from the engine. Have a friend to help you lift it off, especially if the engine is still installed in the car as the head is long and awkward and heavy when lifting. Next, remove the cylinder head gasket from the cylinder head. Once the head is removed, send it to a machine shop to be cleaned and pressure checked for cracks and warpage. Remove all the old head gasket material from the block. I like to use the green M3 cleanup tool, green arrow. It is safe to use on engines and does a great job of cleaning it up. Do not mar or scratch the surface while you are cleaning and take care that no gasket material gets into the water jackets. Check the block deck for warping. A maximum of 0.05 millimeters is allowed. Use a straight edge bar designed for checking engine straightness and a feeler gauge. If your head has to be machined, be sure you ordered the thicker head gasket to make up for the material that was removed. Working at the front of the block where the timing cover joins, apply the sealing compound 3 Bond 1209 over the joints. Place a new cylinder head gasket on the block. Be sure both alignment dowels are in good shape, green arrows. Lower the head back onto the engine as you guide the timing chain up through the timing cover area. Check that cylinder one intake and exhaust camshaft lobes are pointed towards each other, yellow arrows, before installing the head onto the block. If you have to move the camshafts once the head is installed, rotate the crankshaft to 30 degrees before top dead center. Install new cylinder head bolts into the cylinder head, Lightly coat the threads with clean engine oil and install finger tight. Do not reuse your old cylinder head bolts. My head gasket came with torque specs along with the tightening sequence. This was quite handy. The cylinder head bolts are torqued in three stages. Stage one, start by torquing the head bolts to 40 newton meters or 30 foot pounds. Start in the center and work your way outwards, alternating side to side. 
After the initial torquing, you will have to torque the bolts a total of two more times each, each time rotating the head bolt an additional 90 degrees. Stage 2. Use an angle finder and tighten the head bolts an additional 90 degrees. Start in the center and work your way outwards, alternating side to side. Stage 3. Still using an angle finder, tighten the bolts an additional 90 degrees each. Start in the center and work your way outwards again, alternating side to side. You're going to torque the timing chain cover fasteners, green arrows. Be sure to use your earlier noted location of each fastener as they are different lengths. Tighten the fasteners to 10 newton meters or 89 inch pounds. Lock camshafts in place. Install the camshaft locking jig 11-3-240 at the rear of the camshafts as indicated by the green arrow. The jig should slide down onto the square bosses on each end of the camshaft, then secure together. Follow the instructions that came along with your special toolkit to ensure proper use. If needed, rotate the camshaft slightly to properly engage the tool. Next, install the crankshaft locking pin tool 112300 into the hole dust plug was removed from. When installing the tool, push it in until it bottoms out, and then slowly rotate the engine until the pin drops in about an additional 12 millimeters. Once the tool is installed, confirm the crankshaft can no longer be rotated. Follow the instructions that came along with your special tool kit to ensure proper use. While doing this, be sure to keep some tension on the timing chain. Just hold it in the air. Help from an assistant may be needed. Install the exhaust camshaft sprocket with the timing chain onto the exhaust camshaft. Be sure that the arrow on the sprocket, yellow arrow, points to the cylinder head sealing surface. Install the sprocket fasteners, green arrows. A few turns, do not tighten them yet. Next, screw in the timing chain pre-tension tool 114220 into the main timing chain tensioner hole. Do not tighten it yet. Just screw it in until it comes in contact with the timing chain guide. Check that the arrow, yellow arrow, on the exhaust sprocket is still aligned with the cylinder head sealing surface. Adjust if needed. Then tighten the three 11 mm studs, green arrows, on the camshaft sprocket that we installed finger tight earlier. Tighten them to 20 newton meters or 15 foot pounds. Install the timing chain tensioner to the cylinder head, then tighten the four 10 mm timing chain fasteners, green arrows. Be sure tensioner is still compressed with the pin installed. Install the exhaust camshaft spline spacer, green arrow, so that the gap in the splines align with the gap in the camshaft splines, red arrow. Slide the exhaust camshaft spline shaft into the camshaft sprocket. Slide it in until the three threaded holes on the camshaft sprocket are centered in the slots of the spline spacer, yellow arrow. Place the intake and exhaust camshaft sprocket with the secondary timing chain onto the BMW Special Tool 116180. Align the intake sprocket so the spline gap is in the position shown, green arrow. Remove the secondary timing chain and camshaft sprockets from the tool. Then install them on the engine in the same way they were orientated in the tool. The gap in the spline should align. Green arrow. Slide the spline shaft into the intake camshaft until you can only see one millimeter of the splines. Green arrow. Install the intake camshaft spring plate so that you can read front. Then tighten the three 10 millimeter nuts, green arrows, finger tight. Now back to the exhaust camshaft. Install the three E8 inverted torque bolts, green arrows, tighten to five newton meters or 44 inch pounds, then back off half a turn. Then install the thrust plate, yellow arrow. Then install the spring plate. Make sure the marking F is facing outward. Then install the camshaft impulse wheel, yellow arrow, and tighten the 10 millimeter mounting nuts, green arrows, finger tight. Then pull the exhaust camshaft spline shaft out, green arrow, until it reaches the stop. 
preload the timing chain tensioner tool 114220 enter bolt to 0.7 newton meters or 6 inch pounds. Preload the exhaust camshaft impulse wheel, yellow arrow, by hand and tighten the 10 millimeter nuts finger tight, green arrow. Place the Vano setup bracket 116150 onto the cylinder head and evenly tighten the fasteners, green arrows, until it is flush with the cylinder head. Now you can lock the camshaft adjustment fasteners down, green arrows. First torque them all to 5 newton meters. Then tighten the 10 millimeter fasteners to 10 newton meters, 8 foot pounds. Then retighten the E8 inverted torque fasteners to 20 newton meters or 15 foot pounds. Remove the crankshaft locking pin and the camshaft locking tools. Rotate the engine one full rotation and confirm that the first camshaft lobes point towards each other. Green arrows. Reinstall the crankshaft locking tool, then install the camshaft locking tool. Confirm proper alignment. The camshaft locking tool should be flush or almost flush with the intake side of the cylinder head sealing surface. One millimeter is allowed if using a feeler gauge to check. Once you have confirmed the camshafts are timed correctly, remove the special tool from the front of the cylinder head, 116150. Clean the Vanos unit sealing surfaces, then install the new Vanos actuator gasket. Install the Vanos actuator on the cylinder head and install the Vanos actuator fasteners and tighten. Install the engine hoisting hook and tighten. Next you will install the left hand thread Vanos fasteners and tighten. Be sure to use the correct amount of torque. This connection is very important. Install the plastic plugs, they just push back into place. Then install the Vanos actuator metal plugs. Next remove the camshaft and crankshaft locking tools. Reinstall the studs at the rear of the cylinder head and reassemble the valve cover and other items removed. The hydraulic Vanos piston to the camshaft spline shaft torque is 10 newton meters or 89 inch pounds. The Vanos ceiling plug torque is 50 newton meters or 37 foot pounds. Install your new coolant pipe, then install the Vanos line with a seal. Install the intake manifold. Install the exhaust manifold. Install the valve covers. Install the engine cooling fan and shroud. The remainder of the reassembly steps are the reverse of removing. Be sure to replace the engine oil and the engine coolant when done. Bleeding the coolant system and check both for levels. Congratulations, you're done. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.